3D Movie Time Capsule for 2018. Hello, hello, hello. This is Adolf. I have with me Jake. Howdy, folks. And for this 3D Movie Time Capsule, we're talking about movies that came out in 2018. Two years ago, Jake. Yeah. Boy, does it seem like a lifetime ago. Now, 2018 is also a very special year for the website. Do you know why? It's when uh, Jake debuted. Yeah, the world got to hear your voice and know your awesome skills. I don't know about that, but they've heard my voice. Well, we definitely appreciate all the work you've done since 2018, and I definitely appreciate you. You're all the hard work and everything you've done, and I think you're a great member of this team. Aw, and, and hopefully one of these days I'll get more stuff done because I won't have to do as much yard work and stuff. But, hey, I'll try. But Anyway, let's get to the 3D movies. Uh, we're just going to skip the current events. Who cares, really? <laughs> um, I don't know if people are interested in that or not. So uh, let's go to the first 3D movie, Padmavat. This is an Indian movie. Jake, did you watch this? Uh, no, I did not. Um, I had the opportunity to watch this, and I, I kind of got scared and didn't do it. Um, I believe this is the one that did play near me, if you call a 50-mile, a one-way trip to a theater is close. But its screening didn't start until after 10 p.m., and this was like a three-hour movie. Yeah, that's why I got scared, because it's like a three-hour movie. And apparently it was super controversial. And um, I, I I was kind of like, historical inaccuracies and uh, a lot of political stuff there. And I was like, I don't know what I'm going to get myself into if this is going to be a good thing for me to review since I'm an outsider or if I'm just going to, you know, hit all these kind of landmines of uh, I don't know anything about the culture. I mean, I know some things about Indian culture, but not enough to feel comfortable so i was like you know what three and a half hours and it is not too far away from me uh i I just i I couldn't bite the bullet and watch it but apparently it does look beautiful in 3d apparently yeah well this is one of those if a disc comes the 3d disc comes my way i'll i'll definitely check it out but a lot of these movies unfortunately aren't getting uh, 3D uh, Blu-ray home releases anymore. So the reviews are all over the place for this movie, and some say it's really pretty, and some say the 3D is not needed. So, but hey, you know, I- I'm interested. I- I'm a little bit more interested if it happens again. It just it's it's hard for an American like me to to go into these movies without the cultural context, and you know, sometimes you can watch these movies and be- totally get it, and sometimes. You just walk out like, I don't know what's going on at all, you know. <laughs> so we never know. Um, so let's keep going here uh, to the next movie. That is a big one. Black Panther. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, we are recording this on August 29th, 2020. And this is the day after we learned that uh, that the main star of this movie has passed away. Uh, Chadwick Boseman. So it's 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 hard. We were planning to do this podcast anyway, and now it's even harder to talk about this movie. Um, but Black Panther is an awesome movie. Yeah, yeah. Even with the um, some of the effect shots, obviously uh, not finished. Uh, I mean, the three D was pretty good. I mean, it's not the best uh, of Marvel's three um, D, but uh, this is a uh, good movie uh it's an important movie i mean it this movie just showed uh afro uh you know showcased afro futurism uh showed that a a superhero movie with a black lead can be a billion dollar success i mean it proved that beyond a shadow of any doubt yeah that's something that people were legitimately worried about that oh it'll never play and if it does play who cares because in China, you know, they were not going to watch it or, or you know, it, it's not going to be a success. And 
It was a huge success. It made a billion dollars. It was in the box office for a month and a half or something, right? <laughs> or if not more. And it's also been a merch machine. I mean, crap. Uh, you can even get a Black Panther inflatable to put in your front yard for Halloween. I enjoyed the 3D aspect. Um, I felt like some parts were really darkly lit. So it's kind of hard um, to see some stuff. And I, I think the ending, uh, without giving it away, you know, the CGI, which you mentioned, doesn't hold up. And it's just like a really darkly lit action scene. And it's like, huh? Okay. And it doesn't look that great. That's like the main flaw. The acting here and the story are great. It's self-contained. So you don't have to have known other Marvel Cinematic Universe movies to watch this movie. And the mm -hmm. character characters here are all great. I, I really love T'Challa and uh, Killmonger and uh, Ulysses Claw. Yeah, Andy Serkis just goes over the top and just chews all the scenery as Claw in this movie. The scenes where he starts singing he just really crack you up. So, yeah, I love this movie. I gave it a 9 out of 10 Editor's Choice Movie Award. Um, so I, I think it's it's really up there as a Marvel movie and and uh, and they were really smart about this movie. Uh, uh, t the character T'Challa is almost a supporting character. You're more introduced to the char Wakanda. I mean, this is really a showcase for Wakanda more than it is a Black Panther story. But the, but having said that, it's still a good story and and still Chadwick. Bozeman still, you know, delivers the goods, but they structured this where you got you. It just showcased the whole world of Wakanda and what it's about and the character and the people who run it, who run it. And uh, Bagleby Jordan uh, uh, is fantastic here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, it has some deeper story elements there that are not always in a superhero movie and. I remember going to the theaters and watching this and like having, you know, just people excited to see it and wanting it. And it's just like, you know, it's not often that you get to see, you know, a black superhero and at all. <laughs> and it's well done. It's likable. It's everything is great here. And uh, yeah, I remember people like cheering at the end. And it was just like, wow. Um, yeah, I mean, uh I hadn't seen an audience this hyped up for a a movie with a with a, su a black superhero lead since Blade, and that was a long time ago. That was twenty years ago, right? <laughs> oh yeah, that was a long time ago. And this came out like right a little bit after on um, February sixteenth. So it's like that's a kind of a weird time to have a superhero movie, but it worked out really well. Oh, Black History Month. Yeah, I was just, you know, thinking Valentine's Day, but yeah, you know, having it in Black History Month and having a great black cast and everything about this movie is, is top notch and holds up really well. And it, it yeah. feels satisfying, like the way it ended um, makes sense. And it, you know, we do get more story into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but it's also, it's self contained. If, you know, if you never saw. Anything else? If nothing else is done from this, I would be, you know, okay, made sense. But obviously, I want more. If you haven't movie yet and you're listening to this podcast, just stop, go watch it, come back. We'll be here for you. But you got to see this movie if you haven't seen it. You just got to. Just got to hit pause and uh, come back. All right. Let's uh, keep going here to... The first movie that you wrote a review for. Ah, A Wrinkle in Time. Oh, man. This proves that this book is unfilmable. She's a great filmmaker. And she, uh, I, I, I will say this. This is a better adaption than the first attempt at filming this book. But it's, I just think it's an unfilmable book. She did her best, I think. Uh, God knows what the studio interfered with. Uh, there's some great things about this movie, but it just the, overall it just does not hold up. Uh, it's it's kind of heartbreaking because it's this is a really popular kids book, 
And this movie had some things going for it, but between the bad 3D and just the rambling of the story, I mean, the books that way too, uh, she, this movie just proved that this book is unfilmable. The the concept of love, is that enough to make you feel good about this movie? <laughs> no. And the vi- villain being it, you know, is that a good enough villain for you? Nope. <laughs> what about the superstar of uh, Oprah Winfrey being in this movie? This ain't the color purple. It's a movie that I wanted to like. I think I liked it a little more than you, but barely. Um, you gave it a five then. You feel like you gave it too high of a score? No, because like I said, there's some... Storm Reed's incredible. Uh, Chris Pine playing her father, he's really good. So Storm Reed. There's some really good acting in this movie. It just doesn't hold together as a whole. And then the 3D is just really bad. It's like an afterthought. And it's so disappointing because you could see this could have looked great in 3D. It had a lot of visual, interesting visuals that it, if they would have done it better, if they would have shot it in a way that makes more sense, it would have looked really cool. But they just, no. And then in the commercials had all these like um, things popping out of the aspect ratio, which... Would have been cool to see in the actual movie, but no, just have it for the commercial. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Mm, I didn't see the commercial, but yeah, that would have been good. Yeah. So the commercials have it that way, um, where things are flying off the aspect ratio. So to make it look cool and make it look pretty and interesting and that doesn't happen in the movie. I wish it did. So if you're high... Maybe you enjoy this movie more, but if you're not, you're probably not going to like it. <laughs> nah, I don't even think being stoned will help you. Uh, this is just, uh, just brace yourself, with because you're, you're pro- if you're a parent and your kid reads this book, they're probably going to desperately want to see this movie. So brace yourself. And then, and if they're really disappointed, show them the first one. Uh... And then they'll go, ooh. It's like I said, it's just, um, it's a it's a misfire. Uh, and yeah, this was my first movie I reviewed for the site. And I stick with my five. Okay. Uh, let's uh, keep going here. We got a whole lot of movies. Uh, Tomb Raider. Um, I didn't see this until later on. But I actually really like it um, for what it is. I thought it was okay. That's why I gave it a seven. Um, you didn't watch it in 3D, though, unfortunately. We didn't have that opportunity in the U.S., right? <laughs> no, I saw this in 3D. Oh, okay. And the 3D was decent. Um, yeah, Walter Goggins was a good villain in this. Uh, he played a very different character than he played in Ant-Man and the Wasp. Alicia Vikander as yeah. Laura Croft? Mm-hmm. She was fine. She's good. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I still kind of think she could be bulk up a little bit more, yeah. you know, but it's fine, you know. And there were she had a and there was a great supporting cast. I mean, 3D was good in this. I mean, it's a good little romp. Um, it ain't bad. It ain't bad. Yeah, it ain't bad. I mean, it's a seven. It's fine. It's not going to change your life, but it's not going to piss you off. You're not going to feel like you wasted your time and money on uh, on seeing this. And it's worth seeing in 3D. I mean, would I go to a would I jump through a lot of hoops to see it in 3D? No, but it's worth seeing in 3D. I've been it on Redbox and watched it in 2D, and I was like, "This is fun. This is a fun movie. It, it's not great. It's not amazing, but it works for what it is." I actually watched the the previous Tomb Raider, the original one. I actually liked this more than that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The well, the old ones don't. The effects really don't hold up. It's just super cheesy. The Angelina Jolie two meter is so cheesy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the accent, boy. <sighs> All right, let's uh, keep going here to Pacific Rim Uprising. I didn't watch this, but I only watched the first one. How was this movie, Jake? Uh, it's eh, it's a disappointment compared to the first Pacific Rim. First one is amazingly cool. 
yeah, even though it's dark and all that, it still looks gorgeous and the 3D is good. This is kind of, eh. I mean, Charlie Day is a showy part. Uh, but it's just sort of, this is just a lesser sequel. Very few people involved in the first one were involved in this one, and it shows. It just doesn't have the vision that the first one had. This is kind of perfunctory by the numbers. It's okay. I'd probably give it a six. And it took way too long to get this movie out as well. Yeah. And, yeah, it's got, you know, monsters and mechs. You know, it'll scratch that itch. But it's it's just not a Del Toro movie. It doesn't have anything, you know, that special sauce going on. It's perfunctory. Um, it's better than the than the Hellboy than the last Hellboy movie, but not that it has anything to do with this really. It's just as 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 directors taking on Del Toro project sequels. Uh, this is better than most of them, but it's still not great. All right, next up we got Sherlock Gnomes. Um, <laughs> uh, I was gonna bite the bullet and go see this. As I, I'd seen the first, uh, no, um, you know, Nomeo and Juliet, so I figured, what the hell, I'll bite the bullet and go see this. Uh, Regal, where I live, pulled the 3D screenings of this at the last minute. So I was like, uh, I was willing to j- j- dive on that hand grenade for 3D. But 2D, oh, hell no. Yeah, and I was not... I, I mean, the Romeo and Juliet was not as bad as I was thinking it would be. But it was just like, eh. eh. I, yeah. I watched it at the Daughter Theater. It was okay. Um, not complete train wreck. So I was not interested in watching this. So. Yeah, the trailers for this made this thing look god-awful. But I would have dived on the hand grenade for you, the people. Uh to see it in 3D, but I was not. That's a hand grenade. I was not gonna um, land on uh, for 2D. Oh hell no! All right. Uh, next up here is Ready Player One. Um, I like this movie a lot. Um, the 3D aspect is a little bit weird because when the 3 when you're not in the fantasy world of uh, what's that, what is that called? The Oasis. Yeah. The, it's not in 3D. <laughs> Really? It's like two and a half deep? Yeah, it's not that deep. But it's still existing. It's weird. It's it's very weird. And like you switch off back and forth and I didn't you know, it, it's it's okay. Uh overall I did like the three D. I gave it a good, but it was just kind of annoying and frustrating because it goes back and forth between a three D movie and not because the whole story is, you know, the future. Um, yeah, this is a dazzling movie, uh, and it you will be picking stuff out of it. On it, you will it you will be rewarded with multiple viewings. I mean, it was like my third time watching before I noticed the truck from Duel. Uh, yeah, it is totally stuffed with uh, Easter eggs. And- yeah, you will feel like an Easter bunny hopping through the fields and stuff watching this it is just jammed with easter eggs and references and there's a story not the deepest of stories but it's enough to hold your interest you know it's one of those movies i think is going to be more appreciated as time goes by um it's a you know set in the future 2045 and everyone goes into vr because the real life sucks so much and there's a game, and then you have to go do, do different things to w- win the game. And if you win the game, you become the owner of VR and become a trillionaire. And mm. um, it, I thought it was a pretty fun, enjoyable game uh, movie. <laughs> and the the problem is, it kind of the pop culture references kind of stop at the 80s, 90s, you know. And it's like if this is supposed to be set 25 years into the future. They should have some stuff that... Well, the future sucks. Ha- 2020 should have taught you one thing. The future sucks. So obviously in 2045, they've decided 
F this crap. We're just going to just hang out in the 80s and 90s and and the 21st century can go blow. So it, it, it's just weird that the, the pop culture does stop, you know, and it doesn't like, oh, OK, nothing happened after that. OK, but I mean, it's cool. Uh, I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, I, I thought it was great. I gave it an eight. Jake, what would you give it? Eight sounds reasonable. I would, flu- I fluctuate between a seven and an eight in my mind. You know, get a big tub of popcorn and you'll enjoy it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the 3D is worthwhile, too. When it's on. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think you have to see it in 3D to appreciate it. Yeah. All right, let's uh, keep going here to one of your favorite movies. Uh, movies that you reference all the time and say it doesn't get enough uh, rap, good rap. And it's also a video game movie, Rampage! Oh, hell yeah! Oh, hell yeah! This is one of the great unsung gems of, uh, of, of, of 2018. Yeah, I know I only gave this a 7 and I talk about this like it's a 10, but in my heart... Uh, I. Hey, part of that is is because Rampage is my game. That's my jam. <laughs> uh, I, me and two of my friends used to play this religiously because it was a part of it was because it was the only game that three people could play together. Because uh, you don't know how rare that is in video of uh, gaming um, old cops when you go to the arcade and stuff. But it was a great game. They those, this movie really captured it uh even the the raw edgy kind of wink nod nod humor uh i hope this was successful enough to warrant a sequel because i would love to see this these guys get back together again i just thought this was just such a cool ass movie the 3d was good uh i and i love the bromance between uh, computer-generated George and The Rock. I mean, The Rock is such a good actor, I feel like. Yeah, people say he plays the same role in each movie, and I can see that, but he's so likable that he makes things better than they should be, and this is a good example of that. Yeah, and Jeffrey Dean Morgan and The Rock, they have real chemistry, and I just love Jeffrey Dean Morgan. He just captured really what it was like to be a federal agent i mean he reminded me so much of my dad the way he was and stuff yeah and my dad he was a a fed rural agent for i just won't talk about his agency because i just don't think that's relevant to what we're talking about but jeffrey dean morgan just just captured the reality i think of uh what it's like to be an agent in an absurd situation. He just kind of went with what he had to go with and dealt with what he had to deal with. I just thought it was a great performance. It, he was so different from Negan in this, even though I couldn't understand why some reviewers thought he was playing Negan. No, he wasn't. He was a totally different... Like The, like the Rock was playing a different character than he normally plays. Uh, I mean, compare his performance in this to uh, Skyscraper. Uh, this one, this was one of his more likable guys, kind of uh, a scientist who just kind of likes to work out and stuff. Uh, and, he's, and he's taking care of George. God, I hope this gets a sequel because I really want to see how uh, how he takes care of George now that he's a giant gorilla. It's just, it's stupid, but it knows it's stupid, and you have a good time. Uh-huh, exactly. And this thing is so well cast. I mean, when bad guys get their comeuppance, and it's, you know, really silly, you know they that's part of the point. Uh-huh, and there's so many Easter eggs to the game in here. I mean, you even got the lady in red, so, I mean. It's a fun time, it's a fun time. Mm-hmm, I highly recommend it. Especially in 3D. If you can see this in 3D, yeah, I don't know if it'll change your life, but it sure enriched mine. It made this old Rampage um, video gamer very happy. All right, so another movie, the big one. This is it. This is the big one of the 2018 movie that I was super hyped for. And for me, 
I adore Avengers Infinity War. Oh, yeah. Love Infinity War. Love it to death. Yeah, I'd still give it a 10. And I, I, I just, I think it's better than Endgame. I think it, it handles all the characters in a fun way. And how they introduce Thanos. I love Thanos. I love to hate him. I love how well he was executed on screen. Thanos is great. Oh, this movie is gorgeous. The 3D was incredible. Uh, I saw this multiple times in the theater. I even saw it in D-Box. It was like being on a two and a half hour roller coaster. It was an amazing experience. The 3D, I, get, I agree with you. Love it. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I mentioned this before, just in case people don't know. The snap changes the movie from being 3D to 2D. Awesome. Mm-hmm. And I love how the 3D with a Doctor Strange fight in on uh with Ju- it, it's awesome. So many awesome things in 3D here. Wow, I love it, love it, love it. Yep. So, and I I watched this multiple times in the theater as well, and just had a great time. I laughed, I cried, and was just entertained. And um, it was so hard to watch this and be like. Okay, we got to wait another year for Endgame? Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, I, I told people in the theater, I said, back in my day, we had to wait years between Empire and and Return of the Jedi. And people say that the snap is not um, that impactful because you know they're going to come back. We didn't know how they would come back. We And we didn't know. I still think, and I think I've been proven that in Spider-Man uh, Far From Home, there is still some PTSD about this. Yeah. It's not, it's not just, all right, well, that happened and moved on. People, it, it's affected lives, and it's affected things for the big, uh, bigger scale. Yeah, it's something that comics tend to ignore. I mean, when I was a kid, we'd read something, and something completely life-altering would happen to a character, and it's never referenced again. So that was always disappointing to me, but this is, it's something that has real consequences and it's still mentioned, you know, years later, it's still something that drives and affects the stories and the characters, which is how it should be. And Thanos, I mean, he was so good. Everyone's like, you know, I'm not even mad that half the universe is mad, is gone. He made a good point. <laughs> He's a horrible person, hor- but you cannot sympathize with him. The fact that it, you know Josh Brolin does such a great job. I know, but, but I was like going, dude, you could have uh, doubled the universe's uh, stuff. Yeah, but then, and, so. then, and then threatened to cut the wor- cut des- you know cut the world the universe in half if you guys don't fly straight. You know, I think the universe was worth was worth at least one more warning, one more chance. But hey, but he wouldn't have been a villain if he had did that. And this lived up to my hype. Uh, I gave it a 10 out of 10 editor's choice, both for the 3D and the movie. I love Infinity War. I really, really do. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, my first time uh, seeing it was terrible experience. Um, So I quickly went and, before I reviewed it, uh, went and caught us another screening. Because I, this, ugh, Cinnabar, ugh. yeah, I was in the, I was in the theater, I was, first saw this in, um, there were a bunch of drunken frat boys constantly screaming how they wanted to do Gamora, and we were screaming at them, Thanos demands your silence, <laughs> <laughs> we would shout at them, and kick their seats, <laughs> yeah, we got, uh, Massively drunk at the theater and and all got Marvel uh, tiki mugs. <laughs> and the snap. I mean, okay. I was kind of expecting something like that that is comic book accurate. But I wasn't really sure it was going to happen that way. And how they actually portrayed it with the characters disintegrating on screen. And it was just so impactful. Uh-huh. Every screening I saw, people were freaking out, crying, uh, completely just freaking out. 
Spider Man, that that's like a in, super impactful me scene, and wow, yeah, Infinity War is awesome. <laughs> it's kind of the movie you want to give eleven to. <laughs> yeah, I don't think though I could watch it today. I don't think I could watch Black Panther disintegrate today. Yeah. All right, let's keep going here to Solo, a Star Wars movie. So story, not movie. All right, it's a good movie, a really good movie. It's just not great. Yeah, it had the the problem of uh, Harrison Ford is too old to play the part now, and uh, the world wants Harrison Ford to be Han Solo. And I thought the 3D was very weak, very bad. Like it just doesn't seem like at all there. Uh, theater I saw it at was decent. What makes me angry is the tra- I saw many trailers for this in 3D, and they looked amazing. Yeah, I think that's some of it, too. Where I, I remember the 3D trailers looking great, and when I actually saw it, it's like, it just looks so muddy and ugly, and it's just not that much depth, not much this stuff popping out. It's there, but it's just forgettable. And I was like, whatever, it's not worth it, you know? Yeah. Um, I think this movie gets all the hate is because uh, Lord and Miller are kind of are 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 kind of it right now. They're and uh, this is a really good Ron Howard movie. So once I heard he was taken over, I knew what we were going to get. And so I knew what to expect. There would be some great car stuff. Because, uh, I mean, if you f- are familiar with his earlier output. Uh, before he was doing movies like Ransom and uh, Apollo 13, you know, he was doing the Corman car crash movies. So, uh, and of course, you might remember him from being OB on Andy Griffith's show. But I knew what we were going to get, uh, and I wasn't disappointed. But was it great? No, but it was really good. I mean, I stand by my seven for this. It enough i even have it on 3d uh blu-ray so haters you hate all you want i can watch this whenever i want as long as i my tv holds up and i eventually find me a projector that projects in 3d i'll be enjoying this indefinitely out in and rock um he plays solo pretty well i i think i think he's really really great but He's not Harrison Ford. He's not as good as Harrison Ford was in the original trilogy. So it's just, it's almost there, but it's not quite. Uh, I think the problem is, is he's, Lando, played by Danny Glover, is incredible. Yes, he, he outshines him, outshines him. Oh, he's like, oh my God, he's so incredible. He is so awesome. And the robot L3? Awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The villain, eh, I thought it was cheesy. Oh, I thought uh, Woody Harrelson and Paul Bettany as the villains were fine, even though I thought the real, what was really going on in the movie is this was Solo's journey. And I know a lot of people were angry at how Han Solo got his name, but look, it makes sense. An authoritarian government, uh, who likes to label everything, they would call, they would probably have a politically correct name for bastards, and they would use Solo. I mean, uh, heck, Game of Thrones, I mean, they named their bastards uh, Snow, uh, Winter, you know, Snow. uh, Each of the regions had a different one. I can't remember them off the top of my head. But, you know, so to me, Having grown up in a military family, used to paperwork and bureaucracy, understood the the inherent need of a bureaucracy to have to slap a last name on everybody to label them. And so to me, that made sense. I thought the plot was a little bit too convenient at times, and I didn't like the ending. It kind of felt like they was just kind of tacked on. And, uh, uh... Um. When you're when you're trying to tell a story that's set in the past and you know what's going to happen in the future, it's really hard to do something with it. I mean, every once in a while, somebody does something so awesome like uh, Rogue One, 
this we don't know what Lord Miller's intent was for this movie. We just got what uh, Kasdan wanted with Ron Howard directing. Uh, so that's that. Uh, what we got, I was happy with to a degree, but I'll be the first to admit, I really would have loved to have seen what Lord and Miller had planned for this movie. And we're never going to see that, which is a damn shame. It does uh, canify, or can, uh, I don't know how to pronounce that, but it does make canon some of the Star Wars animated shows, which I think were canon before, but having the return of Darth Maul, which I was like, no, no, no. But people that love the cartoons was like, yes, yes, yes. And I was like, come on, man. So it kind of just, uh, yeah. It kind of left me, I left the theater with a sour taste in my mouth. I was like, I, I, was, I was digging it, but it just kind of, meh. But the reality is, America, if Disney should have, when they got Star Wars, just rebooted. Yeah. And did something, you know, don't do something that doesn't involve Skywalkers at all. I would have said it another time. And have something that doesn't tie into anything that's pre-existing. And just, I would have started over. Now, I think they're trying to make it into another sequel for Disney+. Plus, But it's been kind of off and on if they're going to make more solo adventures. I don't know, for sure. Yeah, I don't know either. I mean, this didn't make money at all. I mean, this is the lowest grossing Star Wars movie of all time. All right, let's uh, keep going uh, to Incredibles 2. Now, for me, and um, back when I felt like this was a massive disappointment. Um, I don't know about you, Jake. I thought it was okay. Uh, I was stunned at all the people that went about how beautiful the art was. Most of the time it was, but there were a lot of scenes you could tell they rushed this. To get it out quicker. Because I noticed a lot of unfinished work. Uh, there were things about this I really liked. But there were a lot of things that were meh. So I would give it a 7. But. Uh, and I'm rounding up to that 7. Um, it was okay. But. It. Is not. Li- it is not nearly as good as the first Incredibles. Which is still a 10 in my book. Um, okay. I remember liking the short that was before this with the Asian family making the little things that come alive, the little dumplings. Mm-hmm. I thought that was better than this movie. Yeah. Oh, a lot better. Uh, and the audience I went, when they ate the dumpling, I never heard such a collective gasp from an audience. Yeah, I, I love that. I thought it was hilarious and r- ridiculous. Um, so I and then I was like, okay, cool. I'm I'm I'm. It's called Bio or Bayo yeah. or something. Yeah, Bow. And I was like, okay, cool. And you know, you say that it's rushed. I mean, it took them thirteen years to make this movie. Yeah, well, it didn't show. And yeah, it didn't show. the The plot felt like okay. Instead of having the guy, you know, they just kind of reversed the first movie. Where now the girl, now the wife is the one doing it, and I was disapp- One of the things that disappointed me was, thir- you take you, you you wait thirteen years and then you have this movie take place the next day. Yeah, practically. Uh, I would have rather seen him grow up. Yeah, some time has passed. It, it it doesn't feel like okay. It continues the story, but then. It just kind of rehashes the story too, so it's just like I want to know, I want to see how this has evolved, and it, they don't evolve. Yeah, exactly. It just frustrated me so much, and I felt okay. You know, I I liked the cliffhanger ending to the original Incredibles. I got what they were doing. I was like, okay, it's just kind of an adventure for another time, not really a cliffhanger, but okay. And that they actually start off exactly there. It's like, okay, I didn't really need to see that. Um, if this movie had come out a couple of years after the first Incredibles movie, 
I think people would have liked it a lot more. But when you make people wait 13 years, this wasn't good enough. This wasn't worth the wait. I felt like a lot of the jokes were in the trailers too, so it kind of really ruined it. I was like, come on, man. I, I saw all of these things on the trailer already, and it just kind of... The strobe effect, too. I mean, I'm not one to have, uh, you know, strobe problems, but the, the, the it was bad. The, the screensaver and how he was just sh having strobe effect in that fight, no, that was just too much for me. I had to turn my eyes. <laughs> so I gave it a six, and I can't stand by it. I, I feel like it should have been better. It just felt the same story. And I actually I watched this in theaters, and then uh, my wife and I were like, that was a really weak 3D. And I was like, yeah. And then my cousin, uh, some of her family, like, let's watch Incredibles. Like, okay. And it's like, I just watched it and I didn't love it. And I watched it a second time, like a week later. And I was like, yeah, I, I think my review was pretty spot on. I gave it a six. I'm sticking by it. I, I don't like it that much more than I did the first time. And eh, if it would have been direct to DVD, that's, that's, it would have been fine. I like the bio more. I like that story a whole lot more. I think it's a really... Yeah, Bao was an uh, incredible cart. Yeah, it was too good. They should have put Bao in front of Coco. I mean, yeah, they should have. Um, instead of the stupid... Um... We're not going to get into that. We're not going to get into that. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, so, let's keep going here to the next movie on this list, which is... Um, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, and it's dumb as dirt, but I like it. It's, if you like 3D dinosaurs, you're gonna love it. Uh, me, Rampage is more my jam. It has everything you kind of expect from a Jurassic movie, quote-unquote Jurassic movie. Um, I just, the 3D was fun for what it was. There were some really cool scenes here and there. Um, I, I thought it could have been better, but I still enjoyed the three D, especially like the scene where like they're falling off the island and all the dinosaurs are coming from the back of the screen toward the uh, front of the screen, and you know that was fun. And yeah, just turn your brain off. I mean, Jurassic uh, Park movies have terrible stories, no logic. It's all about the dinosaurs, and anybody who says it different is probably lying or they're in denial. It's just the dinosaurs, dude. That's all anybody really cares about is to see the dinosaurs. I mean, the action scenes are fun. It's stupid. Like, the whole auction aspect doesn't make any sense. That should be much more. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. They spent billions doing this, so what the hell? Um, and then, you know, I feel bad for that one brontosaurus. I still have, oh, that poor brontosaurus had to go die in the volcano tip. <laughs> Screaming. Yeah, I mean, that's. Yeah, it sucked. I mean, that's just such a bummer. Yeah. And then I'm like going, and then they're like cloning people. And I'm like going, dude, why would you waste your time with dinosaurs? I mean, if you can clone people, you can make trillions, man. And the ending, like everything, all the dinosaurs are free in California. And it's like, yeah, I, I, I get what you're trying to do, movie, but really, come on. Mm hmm. But hey. It, hey, in this movie, at least Ron Howard's daughter got to wear sensible shoes. I know this is trash, but I love it. Trash. I gave it a seven. I thought it was, I hated it. I loved it at the same time. Uh, Jake, what did you give it? I still want to give it a five, but I would probably give it a six because the dinosaurs are just so awesome. All right. Next up is Ant-Man and the Wasp. Um, Fun movie. Fun movie. Not great fun movie i like it a lot uh, i mean i made the joke about hey we finally get to see uh, michael douglas back on the streets of san francisco and you have to be pretty old to probably get my joke i think the 3d worked really well um when i went to um i don't know if i told you this story but when i went to go see the movie in imax 3d um it was like they had a problem with the 3d and they're like, okay, we're going to try to fix it. Sorry. And I had to wait 10 minutes to get the projector working. And they're like, all right, if you guys want to want to, you know, we'll come back. 
if you know you want to go to the bathroom real quick you know come back in 10 minutes we should be good and they gave us um like you saw the first five minutes in 3d and then it cut off and then um people were pissed the the managers gave us free tickets to see whatever movie you wanted and then came back 3d worked got to see the whole movie again and I was like, okay, whatever. And I, I just felt like the 3D could have been better. I feel like it was cool. It, it worked. The, you know, some of the gimmicky spec aspects of becoming giant were kind of fun. Some of it, you know, it was just kind of really basic. The, the villain was kind of just generic. It worked. It was fun. I, I, I don't have any rush to see this one again. Well, I liked it. Uh, it's is it the greatest Marvel movie ever made? No. Uh, it reminds me a lot of those um, late '60s, early '70s uh, Disney live action movies. You know, like that darn cat and stuff. You know, Escape from Witch Mountain. Uh, the computer wore tennis shoes. It kind of reminds me of that stuff. Um, this is real. This this movie's a lot better than it should be. Um, I think a lot of that is because they got really gifted uh, comedians who know how to uh, deliver a line and know how to hit their marks. And they have good editing and know how to edit a scene. Uh, there's a lot going on in the background in, of the Ant-Man movies that uh, reward you get rewarded with the multiple uh, viewings, uh, especially if you check out – Hank Pym's uh, labs in the in the Ant Man movies, you'll you pay attention to the background. You're going to be rewarded with some cool stuff going on that really adds to the story. Um, I I still liked it. I gave it a seven. Uh, you think that was too low, Jake, or no? Uh, I mean, I'd give it higher. I mean, I'd personally give it an eight, but uh, but that's me. Um, I have a tendency to rate things higher than you do most of the time. Except for um, <laughs> when I liked a little more than you, um, good old Wrinkle and Tie. Yeah. Yeah. But for the most part, it was really funny. I think the, the comedy aspect of it was really top notch, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was a good paddock cleanse after the heavy Infinity War. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. But then it had a heavy ending, this one, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, let's uh, keep going here to <sighs> Hotel Transylvania 3, Summer Vacation. Still haven't seen it. Still haven't seen it either. I, I watched the first one. I reviewed the second one, hated the second one. And I was like, you know what? I'm not, I'm not going to watch the third one. I'm done. I don't feel like watching this. Yeah, I despised uh, the second one. It was like, uh. And uh, haven't s seen this one. Uh, apparently, it's streaming in 3D, so I might see it one of these days. And it, it continues to make money, so I think they're working on four already. Yeah, but this one hadn't got a 3D home video release, as far as I know. Uh, if you know of a 3D uh, Blu-ray release of this, uh, let us know. So the next movie is interesting. Because um, you don't like Mission Impossible movies at all, right? Yeah, I walked out of the first one, and I haven't seen any of the others. Um, which I don't understand. I, I, I enjoy the first one. I thought the second one was the worst. Uh, I'm a big fan of the TV, 60s show. Uh, that's like one of the greatest TV shows ever made. So, And if you haven't seen it, I don't know how to... Just it's well worth seeing, especially... The first three seasons, I mean, even the later seasons are still good, but this was such an amazing TV show. This was like, well, this is one of the first things I remember watching as a kid that I really, really, really dug. Tom Cruise just doesn't do it for you? Nope. All right. I, if I'm going to watch Tom Cruise, I'm going to watch him in Risky Business. <laughs> um. So, okay. I've enjoyed... Basically all of them except for the second Mission Impossible movie, which I think everyone considers that to be the back sheep. And they get better, and they're just really fun. So I was like, okay, cool. First one could be in 3D. Awesome. 
and my wife and I watched it, and my wife didn't love it, but I enjoyed it, and I was like, the thing is, the 3D sucks. This is really bad. And I did my review, and after I posted it, a lot of people were kind of mentioning to me on Twitter and commenting, you got a bad screen, man. I watched it, and I enjoyed the 3D. And I was like, huh. So I go ahead and complain to Regal, and they gave me a free ticket. And I rewatched it in 3D at a different theater, and the experience was better. Yeah, being regal, that does not surprise me at all. Because I remember the first – this was not at regal, but another theater chain um, that I saw um, Winter Soldier, and I thought the 3D was terrible. But when I saw it again, at a, at a, in, when they converted it to IMAX – it brought tears to my eyes how gorgeous the 3D was. So it completely changed my mind about how the Russos shoot 3D and stuff. Especially after I saw the other um, Russo brother Marvel movies and saw how good the 3D was. So I was really confused. So I originally gave it a week 3D, so that was just not worth it. And then I rewatched it, and I was like, okay, you know what? I enjoyed it. The movie I enjoyed it, it. I gave it an eight. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. That was a great action movie, and the three D was better enough, and I enjoyed it enough that I could upgrade my my you know review, and I gave it good. People were saying that it's the best three D they've seen in years. It's like I don't even if seeing it again and seeing it in better presentation, I still enjoyed the three D. I just didn't think it was the best ever. Um, it wasn't. You know, it wasn't shot for 3D. It was just post-converted. It looked nice. It was nice. I'll give them. So it was worth, you know, some of those. You know, I'm open to change my review if it's worth it. Um, but, hey, it worked out that time. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, um, and this is another one that did not get a home video release. But uh, there are there are really high quality 3D bootlegs of this uh, floating around. Uh, I believe it was captured from a video on demand 3D um, uh, sc- um, s- screenings that been burnt to Blu-ray. So um, buyer beware, it is available illegally in, in 3D Blu-ray. Well. Blu-ray, whatever they call burnt Blu-rays. Anyway. Okay, so let's uh, keep going here to another Dwayne the, jo- uh, the Rock Johnson action movie, Skyscraper. Jake, what do you think of this movie? Uh, it has some things going for it, but I thought it was a little too grim. Uh, the 3D was fine, not great. Uh, Rock is playing a disabled uh, veteran. This is in a kind of a diehard uh, homage. Uh, and there's um, some great scenes uh, that are reminiscent of uh, Wang Jing's uh, High Risk movie. Uh, and uh, some also uh, a scene that's very reminiscent of the mirror scene in Enter the Dragon, which the Enter the Dragon scene is taken from Orson Welles' uh, Lady of... Uh, Shanghai. So you got that. I mean, it's it's not a worthless movie. I mean, I believe I gave it a seven. No. I gave or did I give this one a five? No. <laughs> what did I give? What did I give Skyscraper? A four. You hated it. Oh man, I must have uh I must have mellowed. Well after well, probably I saw this too close to Rampage, because Rampage was so much fun. And this was just pretty dreary. Uh, I, I mean, I did like the wife character. <clears throat> the kids were pretty horrible. Um, and you also said the 3D was very flat. And then you gave it weak 3D. So. Yeah. I guess you warmed up so, to it over the years. Yeah. But still. Um, yeah, so I guess I don't hate it as much as I did. But. Um, so I'll say, okay, maybe it's not as bad as I initially thought it was, but it's still not. Uh, I would recommend seeing Rampage or um, San Andreas before this. 
So, you know, it, it's a good thing. I, I had the review. I'm having the reviews up here. And it's good to see that because sometimes, you know, you kind of, okay, I was too hard on that movie. Or sometimes, you know, that movie really stank. I, I probably should have given it more <laughs> negative review. You know, it, time has a weird thing of, of changing your viewpoints and, you know, nostalgia. So it's that's why it's part of these podcasts are fun. Yeah. All right. Let's keep going here to The Meg. Um, I didn't watch this. It looked ridiculous. Jake, did you like it? It wasn't ridiculous enough. It needed to be more ridiculous and over the top. And Jason Statham should have punched the shark. And it was not uh, R-rated, right? It was just like PG-13? Yeah. I mean, I have seen really good shark. Shark Night was also PG-13, but it was great. This, not so much. It had some things going for it. I mean, it's trashy fun, but it's not trashy fun enough. I mean, it needed to be more Piranha and Shark Knight than trying to be Jaws. So you gave this a five back then. You still think that's uh, appropriate? Yeah. Five out of ten. And you gave it a weak 3D. You thought it was just kind of not worth it. Yeah. I didn't think the 3D was particularly good. Um, but it's this is one, though, because I do like shark movies. That if I came across this in 3D Blu-ray cheap, I'd probably pick it up to revisit it. Okay. Uh, let's keep going here to... Now, this movie is really weird because the early trailers for this, I was like, oh, God, really? And then the second trailer had really bad narration. And I was like, oh, okay, uh, this is bad. This is a turd. And I was like, all right, I don't want to use my real money for this. Um, but, hey, I got some Patreon money. I'll, I'll cash in my Patreon money and, and let's uh, watch this. That movie was Alpha. And I was so wrong to judge this movie before it came out. And when I actually watched it, I love this movie. It is a sleeper hit. It is a gem of a movie that people just not pay attention to. It looks incredible in 3D. It looked, it was so much fun, so well shot. I love Alpha. Yeah, I I am still, I am looking for this on 3D Blu-ray because I would love to watch this at home in 3D. But I, ha I don't think it's gotten a release, which is a damn shame. This is a beautiful movie. It is gorgeous. Um, this is well worth your time to see in 3D. Uh and also people complained about the, the people looking too handsome for to be quote-unquote cavemen. And I don't really care about that. It didn't bother me. Well, I, well the thing is, uh, this was made at a time when they just discovered the, that, that there were more links between uh, Cro-Magnon and Neanderthal and humans than previously thought. So... This is looks like they were going with uh, being the De oh what are they the Devon Sands or whatever, so yeah they didn't go with Neanderthal looking people, more looking more like uh, Homo sapiens, but hey if if that's the biggest complaint you have at a movie is something a stylistic choice like that then you've got a pretty damn good movie. Um, yeah, the, the, so many shots. It felt like they filmed this in 3D because it was so beautiful, so gorgeous in 3D. Like, so many times I felt like I was there with them. And, you know, there's like a, a hunting scene in the beginning of the movie. I felt like I was in the grass there with the camera. And there's this, you know, the epic scene where, you know, the father loses his son. And the whole son, the whole plot is the son trying to find his way back to his village and he be befriends a wolf and he, you know, the wolf and them work together to get back. And it's just, it's a very simple story, but it's so yeah. well done. So effective. yeah, this is like the secret. This is the secret origin of, of, a, of a boy and his dog. Yeah. You know, how a human race, uh, domesticated, uh, the wolf to become the dog or something like that. It's, it, this is worth the time and effort to see, especially in 3D. Yes. It's worth it. 
and it just stunned me because sometimes you get bad trailers and you watch a movie and you're like, holy crap, I love this movie. <laughs> and this is one of the examples. Yeah, this is a movie. They should have given it a different name. And, and if they had a better ad campaign, um, this would have been a content. This could have been a contender for the for best animated feature. I mean, it wouldn't have won because it was up against a, a super juggernaut that there was no way it was going to lose because it was so incredible. And it, it really flopped. It only made like a hundred million, and the budget was fifty. So this is something that people probably skipped over because the bad trailers and and the name gave it no idea what it was about alpha what does that mean it was a, and you know it looked the posters are beautiful and this movie is just so well choreographed like you don't really need like they barely have any dialogue and what they you know what's there is needed and that's it you don't really you know it's just a beautiful filmmaking. I love Alpha. Yeah. Top notch. Editor's choice. This is a beaut. I gave it great I gave it great three D and I gave it a nine out of ten. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So you agree with that? Yep. Alright. So this next movie now it did not come out in three D here. And uh, I was actually getting ready to write an article about it because we saw the the first the, the the writer director said, "Oh yeah, it's gonna be in 3D," but no trailers were in 3D, and you know it was about to come out, and it didn't get a 3D release in America, but it got 3D release other parts of the world, and this movie was very panned. Uh, the Predator. Did you watch this? Yeah. And how was it? It was okay. Uh, about a five out of ten, six out of ten. Um. It also didn't help at the last minute. They had to edit edit the movie to remove a, a convicted sexual predator who got himself cast. Um, and the studio decided to remove his scene at the last minute, which I don't have a problem with. Because, I mean, uh, people refuse to go see movies uh, with sexual predators. So I think a studio has the right to protect themselves against that kind of financial it. Um, this it, movie's a mess. It's a romp, kind of. It's not complete trash, but it's... You can tell Shane Black was trying to be very accommodating to the studio. And you can just see every a bit of advice he was given. He just tried to make it work. Didn't work. Uh, it's a disappointment because of how good the first Predator is. And heck, that's... Oh, and it's... I just... Instead of watching this or trying to find it in 3D, just go watch the first Predator movie. And you get to see Shane Black as an actor in that one. And the 3D conversion of it is interesting. Okay. Uh, so, it's one of those instances, which we have a few on this year, where a 3D movie comes out, and it's only in 2D in America, but 3D in other parts of the world, and it's really frustrating for us, because you're like, well, what the hell? Why can't we see it in 3D? It didn't even, and I don't think it even got a home video release anywhere in the world in 3D. So you don't even have that option. So next up is another 3D quote unquote movie that did not come out here. Now it's weird because it was attached to another 3D movie that you had to pay for. And uh, that movie um, you reviewed for the website and the other movie we left it on for patrons because it was 2D only. Um, so it's, it's a weird thing because the second movie is a short it's 15 minutes or something right mm -hmm. but um just in case you're not you have no idea what we're talking about so in america they had this weird game where if you wanted to see a thriller michael jackson music video in 3d you had to watch it combined with the house with the clock in its walls 
which was not in 3D in America. Yeah, and you had to see it in, in IMAX. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, the, the, uh, it doesn't make any sense um, why you, you, you just, you know, not wear your 3D glasses for the next movie. And uh, so, okay, first things up, because it released, technically speaking, released first. And it never got a, a wide release besides this. How was Thriller from Michael Jackson in 3D? Uh, it was mind-blowingly awesome. Uh, I was impressed. Uh, I thought it was gorgeous. I thought the 3D conversion was gorgeous. Uh, I want a copy of this now. Give it to me, you MFs. I want to see Thriller in 3D again on my uh, system. And, and that's just such a weird thing that somehow, yeah, unless you watch this obscure movie in IMAX, you're never going to see this again. It's like, come on, man. Yeah, I know Michael Jackson's legacy is taking a hit. I mean, he's dead. He's he's not the things he's accused of doing. He can't do them anymore. Zombies aren't real. Uh, it's. I mean, I just can't wait till we uh, get over certain things. Um, and but. I would like to see this again in 3D. I mean, I know John Landis is persona non grata too, and I agree with that. Uh, because Vic Morrow should still be with us, and those poor kids. So I understand all that, but uh, this was a really good conversion. It should be seen by more people. Hell, Hall Halloween season is when this should be seen. Yeah, and the 3D is amazingly good. Uh, this deserves to have a release, a 3D release, home video. I mean, people should be uh, able to play this in their front windows, and trick or treaters can put on 3D glasses and watch this. Yeah, it's it's hard because I understand not wanting to give um, Michael Jackson's work a voice since. The allegations of him um, having and inappropriate, Don, and Don Landis, yeah, because Twilight Zone movie and his crappy son. I understand that. At the same time, though, Michael Jackson, his art, the music he made, is so incredible. It's so timeless. It's 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 hard. Sometimes you gotta divorce the artist from the art, and and this is one of the instances where Thriller is an amazing achievement. And music videos, <laughs> yeah, it's an awesome song. And yeah, did do I think Michael Jackson did it? I don't know what the hell he did. I you gotta at least confirm that he's a crazy person or he was a crazy person. And he, I don't know what happened. I don't. I I want to believe the victims, but also I don't know if Michael Jackson is really a hundred percent mentally there any uh, for he's a while. Dead. I mean, he's dead now, so he's part of history. Uh, so in some ways, it doesn't matter. But in other ways, it will always matter. Uh, I, I am not one for cancel culture because that's one of the things I really got out of the Joker movie that Todd uh, Phillips did is the whole subtext of that was – uh, examine what cancel culture really does and means. And um, I do think there are people that do need time out and canceled, but I don't think it should be a eternity. It's it's a weird thing where I agree with some of it, I disagree with some of it, and it's like, this you know should be available for people that want it. If you don't want it, then it's, you don't have to get it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, let's talk about the other movie, The House with the Clock in Its Walls. Eh, it's okay. It's not great. It's just meh. Yeah, it's a kind of a, it's a, eh, it's, it, the, this movie exists because um, Goosebumps made money. I just kind of feel like it was okay. Like, they, they said it in the past, and they just didn't really know what to do with it, and it was okay. I don't regret. Yeah, it's, it's goosebumps. Um, light. light. Yeah. So yeah, it's a weird thing that you know, 
the only way you could have seen Thriller in 3D is to see it with this mediocre kids movie in IMAX and only for one specific day, you know. Yeah, and uh, uh, yeah, and and this movie apparently got a 3D release somewhere. Why it wasn't with Thriller in IMAX is beyond me. Just idiocy. I think that Michael Jackson uh, or the Jackson family has released certain things in 3D or certain like Blu-ray box sets or something, but this wasn't part of it. So it's just, it's a weird thing that you have to ha- watch this other movie attach it to this movie. And it just, and it doesn't make any sense, you know? Yeah, it was dumb. I mean, I'm very happy I had the opportunity to see it. But I think more people need that opportunity, and I would like the opportunity to see it again. I would love to put 3D Thriller on uh, background so at a Halloween party so people can just don the glasses and fifteen for 15 minutes be blown away by how awesome that is. All right. But, yeah, it is what it is. It's, it's a weird relic. It's something that people may have forgotten about because, you know, it just – kind of if you weren't paying attention you may never have known the thriller had a 3d release <laughs> so. yeah all right let's move on to a bigfoot movie a uh, small foot from warner brothers uh, this is, mm-hmm. yeah this was a really pleasant surprise great character designs uh charming movie great 3d i highly recommend this it was cute it was fun it was i had a blast now, um, this movie, I think we're kind of thinking back then, we're like, this is going to be a, a bad movie. It looks stupid. And you liked it a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, it actually has, like, a, a really interesting kind of story where I haven't seen it, so I don't know. Um, but it's about questioning social norms and having critical thinking skills. And some people thought this was an anti-religion or anti-traditions movie. Um, so that's weird. <laughs> yeah. yeah, if you think that, then you probably... Um, oh, oh, well, I'm not going to get political here, but you can guess what I would, where my mind would go to. This is just one of those... This is a really good movie. Uh, and if you disagree with its message, you know... Uh, You're an extremist. Whatever. <laughs> uh, whatever. All right, let's keep going here to another controversial movie. And it's controversial because some people love it, you, and some people hate it, me, Venom. Uh, I don't love it, but I appreciate it. Uh, this movie's trash. I won't pretend otherwise, uh, but it's fun trash. I guess it's like um, Jurassic World. Fallen Kingdom for you, where it's like, you know, or for me, I thought, I know it's trash, Jurassic, but I thought it was fun. I hated Venom. I thought it was just so bad. <laughs> um, I gave it a four. You gave it a seven. There were a couple, yeah, there were a couple of scenes in this movie that redeemed it for me. Uh, the fish, the lobster tank sushi was one, and uh, when uh, the girlfriend delivers the symbiote, to Eddie Brock and that upside down twisted kiss. Those really uh and then of course some of the motorcycle scenes. Yeah, and for me that lobster scene in the restaurant was so heavy cringe that I was just like, oh no. I was laughing so hard. I was laughing incredibly hard. Uh and uh I really gained a, even a more appreciation for this. Because when I went to see this, they screwed up the screening and would not start the movie over again. So I was pissed. So I actually wound up on my phone disputing the charge. So, hey, thanks, Regal. I ended up seeing this for free because you were jackasses. The 3D, I thought, was very bad, too. Like, it's only like one or two scenes that were cool. But most of it was so dark. It just wasn't really there, at least for me. And I watched an IMAX 3D, so I was like, oh, man, I paid a lot of money for this. Home video, it looks uh, really good. 
so I got the yeah I managed to track down the German disc for this and I was quite pleased with it. And the the ending it just doesn't make any sense. It's like how did you not die from that? How what did I miss a scheme? Did I blink and there's a scene there? It's just ugh, it just pissed me off. Yeah, and let's hope for the sequel. Woody Harrelson gets a better wig. All right, we still got to look like side. He looked like sideshow Bob. That wig. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we still got a handful of movies to go through, so let's keep on going. Um, I didn't watch this, but you. This is one of your most hated movies of the year. Nutcracker and the Four Realms. Hey, the only thing I can say about this is, hey, there weren't any Nazis in this one. What is it with Nutcracker 3D movies? They have to be the most messed up things ever. I mean, damn, we've had two of them that are completely messed up uh, beyond the... I mean, these are jaw. Both of them are jaw droppingly bad for different reasons. And this, they tried to turn the Nutcracker into an action adventure flick from Disney. Yeah, from Disney. I mean, what the hell? Yeah, and Joe Johnson directed this. You know, he's the kind of the go to guy uh, who normally doesn't get in the way of a script, but somebody got in the way of this. Um, there's some great brief moments of the Nutcracker being formed in 3D that are awesome. In fact, why doesn't somebody just do a straight-up Nutcracker in 3D? I mean, come on. Ballet. Pena shows ballet looks gorgeous in 3D. So why don't you give us a Nutcracker film ballet in 3D? That's what people for Christmas want. They don't want this garbage, either Nazis or whatever this is. It's like multiple dimensions and, and crap and steampunk. Uh, exactly. Uh huh. I'm just hoping uh, Shazam Two, when they go to the different realms, isn't like this. You give this a four out of ten. Is that too high, or, or do you still feel about the same? I'll stick with the four because there are some interesting visuals. The 3D you liked. The 3D you said was good. Yeah, the 3D is good. If you if you got to see this, I recommend just turning the sound off. But <laughs> if you can find, hey, this is bad enough. I would like to see this again in 3D. So if this got a home video release somewhere in the world, uh, add us. Let us know. And I might add it to my backlog of 3D stuff that I'll never catch up on. All right. So next up is The Grinch. Now, this movie is the longer version of The Grinch from Illumination. And uh, Benedict Cumberbatch is The Grinch. And you really love this movie, right? Yeah, I liked it a lot. It was surprisingly good. I stand by that. I know. Uh, uh, hey, I'm a Grinch purist. Uh, I hate the Ron Howard, uh, Jim Carrey version with a purple passion. I actually threw shit at the screen at it. I hated it so much. But this one, I really enjoyed. The 3D is great. The characters and designs are good. Uh, I really like the changes to Cindy Lou. Uh and I really thought Benedict Cumberbatch doing an American accent was a great choice. <laughs> I just like the snarky sarcasm of him. Uh, and I really like the, how they fleshed out the relationship between the Grinch and Max, his, you know, his, his dog. It's, it's more of a partnership instead of a pet. Uh, they were really smart with how they expanded the story. Because, I mean, The Grinch is only like a, what, 24-minute story, you know, 30-minute time slot. I really thought they um, – I like this. I thought this was really well made, and I stand by it. Yeah. It holds up. Yeah, I watched this later on, and I digged it a lot. It does have a little bit of padding, but I still found it enjoyable, and they expanded on the original and made it interesting and different. Yeah, and I thought some of the slapstick scenes, which were padding, were the three D was well he was well done, made them worthwhile. You know, 
I really, is it a holiday classic? Don't know yet, but uh, I'll probably be putting it on this holiday season. And the 3D was really good, right? Yeah. If anything, yeah, this is well worth checking out for the 3D. I highly recommend it. Now, after I watched this, I decided to go into the uh, Grinch animated shorts. And uh, I watched the one with the Grinch and the cat in the hat. And wow, that was bad. <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen the shorts, so. Yeah, the the Gr- <laughs> cat in the hat is tortured by the Grinch. And just like, it, it, it's like 14 minutes long. And it's like, the cat in the hat is just trying to have a good picnic. And the Grinch is just an ass. And it is just like, wow. The Grinch is full on ass in that, in that short. And it's not, it's just like ridiculous how crazy that uh, short is. Um, but let's move on. We got Fantastic Beasts and the Crimes of Grenewald. Now, this is the movie that we both agree on, and we might be the only ones in the world that like this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't have the whole on hate uh, for uh, the uh, for these Fantastic Beasts series. Uh, but I am, uh, I don't know about you, but I'm so tired of uh, Rawlings and her crap. And, uh, but I can divorce uh, a, a, an artist from their work. Um, are these is uh, these some are these these movies aren't as good as the original Harry Potter series, but these movies are better than some of the movies in that original series. Uh, are they as good as the best ones? Of course not, but they're better than some of the weaker ones. Um, there's. The effects are beautiful. The 3D is beautiful. Um, the 3D is absolutely beautiful. Stunning how gorgeous it is. <laughs> There's a lot to be said for these movies in the plus column that make them worthwhile for 3D fans. I think the opening scene is in a darkly lit rain. And in, oh my God. I was like, wow. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. And uh, and Johnny Depp is amazing as Grindel. Like, I actually liked this movie more than the first one, which I thought I was lukewarm on. I like this more. Not by a lot. I gave this a seven. I, I still, you know, a lot of people hate this movie. I, I, I dig it more than the original. But I agree, it's not as good as Harry Potter movies. And I also agree with you that I don't know what the hell J.K. Rowling is doing. What got in her head, you know, just... And the, to me, the main storyline isn't nearly as interesting as the romantic subplot. That, to me, is more interesting going forward than uh, than Commander Newt. I mean, he's, he's almost yawn-inducing. And the tone, the, the, the narrative is kind of a mess. I agree to that. That it's really hard to follow at times, and it can get really wacky to be really serious. Well, that's why uh, we gave it a seven. Yeah, I still liked it. I still liked it a lot. Mm-hmm. But it's a mess, and we we're the first to admit it. Yeah. But there's, but the three D is maze balls in this. I, you know, I said it in my review. The movie, this movie, is a sloppy good time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. That's why this is not a 10. There's a good reason it's not a 10. I, I, I really don't know where the hell this franchise is going. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they know where it's going. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, you got they uh, tried to cancel Johnny Depp and we found out that he's uh, innocent. So uncancel him, please. I mean, cancel JK because she's just not doing a good job writing these stories. Yeah, and uh, and. And I just don't want to even give her politics a uh, platform, you know. If you want to cancel her, fine. Uh, I won't stand in your way. I'll join you, by the way. I mean, I have no interest in reading anything she has to say anymore. You know, Uh, the the fact that Warner Brothers made this into a five-series movie series before the first one came out, it's just like, okay, you're just greeting greedy right now. 
and you, you know it, it really feels like they don't have like they should have if they wanted to make it into a trilogy fine but they don't really have a where they're going with it they're just kind of making things up as they go along and i you know the fact that jk is writing this and she is part of this i was excited for because okay cool the original writer but she's screwing this up and maybe she has mental issues i don't know what going on with her because her hate of trans people is ridiculous and she's wrong period so yeah let's just keep going uh uh, uh let's talk about ralph how uh, he broke the internet <laughs> yeah um weird movie but i like it but not i didn't like this nearly as much as the first one because i just when it when they have the the mid movie fight in the leads i was like oh this is just so typical of this kind of when you don't have ideas um uh but it's still gorgeous it's still great 3d i just wish this got a home video release someplace other than japan uh because uh i don't feel like paying a hundred dollars u.s for a 3d blu-ray of this movie I, I kind of worry that this movie is going to get so dated right away. <laughs> uh, it's probably already. Uh, I mean, it's a masterpiece when you compare it to something like the Emoji Movie. This, in some ways, feels like a real version of the Emoji Movie. <laughs> yeah, a better version of the Emoji Movie. But it's still, compared to the first Wreck It Ralph, though, it's not nearly as good. But it's still a decent movie. It's just not a great movie. Yeah, it's really weird too because like it breaks some of the rules that were set up in the original and then like the whole ending of the movie is about Ralph, you know, destroying himself and it's just like what the hell is going on here? It's so weird. It's so meta. It's so but the some of the jokes work really well and a princess's scene is a must see, especially in 3D. That's why I know one of these days I'm going to be flush and I'm going to be drunk shopping and I know I'm going to click on a link and I'm going to buy this 3D Blu-ray and then I'm going to be eating canned tuna uh, for a month and I will wonder, is it worth it? And then I'll see that princess scene in 3D and I'll chuckle again and go, yeah, while I'm eating dollar uh store uh canned tuna it, it's an enjoyable movie it's just not as great as original and i think it didn't do that well box office wise so the the ralph series is basically dead i think yeah we'll find out well th these you have to admit disney pretty much their movies are pretty much advertisement and uh intellectual property development for attractions at their amusement park uh so, uh, hey, Martin Scorsese was was kind of right. Um, okay, it's just not. It's Disney. It made like five hundred million, so it wasn't a complete flop. But it was. I, I feel like pop culture wise, it, it didn't like. It had some fun now, but I feel like it's gonna get really dated. And it had that fake Frozen Two um, cop out ending mid trailer. <laughs> And yeah. that was actually a Rickroll, which is fun, but, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, this one feels like it's dated already, and it's only two years old, and ten years from now, people are like, what's eBay? <laughs> yeah. Um. So let's uh, keep going here. Got a few more left. Um, Mortal Engines. Oh, this was a, this was a misfire. <sighs> it looks so beautiful. It has so much potential. It just did not capitalize on the potential. Oh, and and what two years can do? Robert Sheehan went from being, is he going to have a career? To, oh my God, uh, he, I love him as Klaus on uh, on the Umbrella Academy. Oh, I didn't know that was him. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's him. And if you really want to see him in early days, uh, check out the early seasons of... Uh, the Misfits, the British version, uh, he's incredible. At first season is incredible of that show, The Misfits. 
Later seasons, not so much, but that first season is incredible, and he's uh, in that, too. When they're trying to figure out what his superpower is, it's awesome. Um, it, it's, it's, a, it's a movie that I feel like it could be good. Um, it just doesn't get there. I don't like the characters. I feel like it just is dull and boring. It has great scenes in great you know Visuals. yeah good 3d but it's it just falls apart the the main the main people i don't like i do like i mean i like him almost everything because he just knows how to play it over the top the villain here as thaddeus um you know, yeah, you know I mean, and yeah it's really good in this stephen lang is really good in this um it would be. It's got its moments, but for every moment, it just misses the mark in so many other places. So I don't, I, I don't think this story is going to continue on. I think we got what we got, and that's going to be it. Now this was a certified flop because the budget was one hundred and one fifty, and the box office was eighty four, give or take. So mm-hmm. it was. Uh... It had potential. It has a good idea. It has a good scope. It just doesn't execute on that. And it's something that I was like, I never heard of Mortal Engines before this. It was something original, and it just kind of flopped. Mm-hmm. Now, from a flop to completely and totally blown you away in its excellence, a movie that we were not too excited before it came out. It looked pretty, but we weren't sure about it. This is Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. Wow. Yeah. Well, this won the Academy Award for Best Animated Feature and deserved it. Yeah. I was like, okay, cool. I like Spider-Man. I like, you know, um, this art style is really cool. It's hip. It has, you know, Miles Morales. And I was digging it. And then when when you gave me the review and you gave it a 10, I was like, holy crap, I got to see this movie. Yeah. Yeah, I still stand by that review. This is a 10. This knocks it out of the park. It's got Editor's uh, Choice 3D. I mean, this movie is amazing. And it gets better with repeat viewings. Now, you gave it a great 3D. You didn't give it Editor's Choice, but... Um, it should have. I don't know why I didn't give it Editor's Choice. For me, my 3D experience, unfortunately, the the, the it was just like slightly misaligned. So I was able to watch it, but I wasn't really, you know, I couldn't find anyone to complain to. So I kind of gave up after like 10 minutes of trying to find someone to complain yeah. to. Um, mm-hmm. and this is well worth hunting down in 3D. Uh, yeah, this did not get a U.S. 3D home video release, but it got 3D release in several uh, other countries. It is well worth the hassle of being able to watch uh, a disc that you may have to uh, have a region broke machine in certain regions to play the disc, but it's well worth it. It's beautiful. Uh, This movie is awesome. This is the best Spider-Man movie ever made. It's just so much fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's beautiful. It's you're rewarded with repeated viewings because there's so much going on. You'll never catch it all in one screening. It's a gift that keeps on giving. It's such a wonderful story. It's got great performances. It's beautiful. It's great. I can't wait for I can't wait for another one. Yeah, I think they're making this into a big like multi series thing. And I remember that they were originally talking about having the live action Spider Man in this movie. But then they couldn't get the 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 they, they everyone wanted to be in it, um, but they couldn't get the scene recorded in time. But they want to do it for next one, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would love to see Tobey Maguire in one of these. That would be awesome. It just it knows what it is and completely executes on that to the tenth degree, and is so fun. Yeah, when I saw this. Lord Miller doing this, I'm like going, damn, what they could have done with Solo. What they could have done with Flash movies. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, hey, what they did with uh, 21 Jump Street. 
I, I you don't doubt them. <laughs> I, I don't know why. Yeah, don't. Yeah, don't doubt them. Yeah. All right, let's uh, keep going. We got a few more movies. Uh, Aquaman, the movie that everyone was gonna hate before it came out, and everyone is hating Aquaman for decades. And Aquaman proved them wrong. It's awesome. It's a great movie. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. Jason Momoa knocked it out of the park. Um, Aquaman is also visually beautiful. Oh my god, this movie was a gourd was a treat. It was gorgeous. I mean, yeah, the story's not the greatest. <coughs> but it was beautiful to look at. And uh Amber Heard may be the worst uh person these days. And if you want to cancel her, go ahead. Uh almost any woman in a wig could be uh Mara. I mean she good she was good but there's a hundred other actresses that would be just as good uh in that part so if she's recast i don't think anybody's gonna really care um nicole kidman was incredible cliff Kurtz was incredible i mean this movie uh willem dafoe was incredible uh, Patrick Wilson. I mean, this movie is cast beautifully from top to bottom, pretty much. Uh, there's some beautiful 3D scenes. Uh, James Wan really did some stuff in this movie that is just just so awesome. The chase scenes, the way stuff was shot, there was a lot of care and love taken. And Topo! A Topo cameo. He's Aquaman's pet octopus. That plays the, the drums. Uh huh. Well, yeah, in this he plays the drums, but he was awesome, and he's just one of those characters that, unless you read the Ramona Friedman um, run of Aquaman or saw the '60s series, you probably didn't see much of Topo. Um, and Aquaman, it, it you said it before, and I agree with you. It's beautiful to look at how they. The choreography, uh, the cinematography is just beautiful. The fight scenes are pretty fun. And, you know, Momoa is, is dumb, but he is so much fun to watch on screen. And this movie made Brink. It made a billion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this movie was a great. There were times it was uh, Romancing the Stone, and in other times it was Raiders of the Lost Ark. And in other times, it was a real scary horror movie. I mean, this movie is just just an – this is a spectacle. This is what Hollywood is good at. Uh, a big budget. It's beautiful. The 3D is great. It, it goes all over – I mean, this thing has more – goes around the world like a James Bond movie. I mean, wow. Yeah, this is – this deserved its billion dollars oh yeah this is well worth seeing uh yeah who would ever if you had told me 10 years ago that aquaman and wonder woman were gonna be the big stars of the D dc universe i would have laughed at you if you would say that aquaman made more than twice as much movie as a superman movie pa! yeah i would laugh at you but now we're getting we're coming into a world that we're going to probably have a Justice League led by Wonder Woman and Aquaman. And the same thing goes to, uh, you know, 10 years ago. Oh, well, okay, maybe 10, not 10 years ago, 20 years ago, before Dark Knight, you know, Joker movie would be, you know, an impactful, artful movie that everyone loves and thinks it's one of the best movies of all time, you know. Oh, and if you play the and if you play the Joker, you're gonna win an Academy Award. We've had two actors win Academy Awards for playing the Joker. Yeah, and I mean everyone hated Aquaman. It was a joke. You say Aquaman laugh track. <laughs> uh huh. I I mean I can remember for years the this you'd see a little a, a little anime a scene. You know, just random scene, and then an animated Aquaman shows up and shakes his booty. You know, it was hysterical, because Aquaman was just seen as the guy, his superpower was to talk to fish. But seeing Jason Momoa riding his shark, I mean, holy shit, that was awesome. 
Yeah, and it, it, they just made it work, and it's so fun to watch, and the story is cool. I, I dig Aquaman. I gave it an A. I, I agree with that. Um, it, it, I gave it a good 3D. I think there's some parts where it could have been better, but maybe the, my theater would have been a problem there, but I dig Aquaman. Aquaman is fun. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, this this movie has, was not without its flaws and faults, but it overcomes them. I mean, Jason Momoa is like star power i mean and 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 patrick wilson was this stuff and nicole kidman is his mom i mean it's just this is just a this is a movie that gets better with age and repeat viewings because you'll start appreciating it more and more and you know if you would said a black panther movie and an aquaman movie being both billion dollar sellers no one would have believed you because you know people are like Black Panther. I mean the 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 that political thing. No, that won't be a hit. It's no Aquaman's a joke. Nope, that's how 2018 changed things. Mm-hmm. All right, we got one last movie we're going to talk about. Well, okay, there's there's two movies here. Um, I'm just going to mention them really really briefly. Mowgli. A Netflix movie that was going to be a 3D release but never got 3D release. Or I, I don't know if it did. It came out directly to Netflix and people didn't care. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I haven't heard of it. If you happen to have heard that this got a, a 3D video release like the Crouching Tiger remake, uh, let us know because we haven't come across a... Um, 3d uh disc of this and we're curious and i think this was like delayed several times after jungle book and by the time it came out on netflix i don't know if anyone cared yeah i never watched it i don't care but it just took too long to come out and then um a movie that i'm kind of interested about but i haven't seen long day's journey into night apparently it's like really well shot in 3d um it's a asian movie but it's just got a long scene in 3D. Um, I know, I know. Look, you guys know I've been sick. I've been hospitalized. And also, I've got a lot of yard work to do. And hey, we're in the middle of an apocalypse right now. Um, I will eventually watch this movie. I will review it. Just... I've got so much stuff I have to do, and my health keeps taking a turn. Heck, I just had dental issues. Yeah, I know I know. I should be able to watch a movie with dental issues, but when they hurt so much, I like to be able to concentrate on the movie, not be distracted, and give it my all mm-hmm. attention when I watch. Lately, I'm just having to do a dozen things at once. Um I have a lot of 90-year-old neighbors who can't go out, so I'm having to do their grocery shopping and stuff. Okay. Uh, and mowing their lawn and stuff. So we, we, we want to get to this movie eventually, but not yet. Uh, so there's two more movies. Uh, both the movies you reviewed, I'm going to leave the last one because that's a weird one because it both came out both 2018 and 19. <laughs> um so this next movie we're going to talk about is Bumblebee. Now, the this Transformers movie, I reviewed the last Transformers movie before that, and now you love this movie, apparently? Oh, this movie is wonderful. And Universal, where in the hell is a 3D Blu-ray of this movie? I want to watch this movie again in my home in 3D, and I can't because you don't have any faith in putting it out on home video. Boo! And look great in 3D, right? Yes, it looked great in 3D. This is a great movie. This is the best Transformers movie ever. It, it's they say that's like a 1980s family sci-fi fun movie, like The Goonies, right? Yeah, exactly. You would swear if this came out, you would swear this was something Spielberg directed in the 80s. <sighs> I... This is like a Hamilton movie. John and John Cena gives an incredible performance in this movie. So does um oh what's her her name is she was in True Grit. She was the voice of Gwen Stacy in Spider Verse. She's incredible in this movie. Her name is Haley um Stanfield. 
this movie is just so incredibly good. Okay. Uh, last movie on the list is They Shall Not Grow Old, uh, a very rare documentary that's in 3D. Jake, you love this movie. Oh, I love this movie. I, I can't believe this isn't in 3D on video either. Come on, Peter Jackson, get this out on home video in 3D. It was converted to be in 3D and converted to be in color. Sir, and it is absolutely gorgeous. And yeah, and then, and then they dubbed sound to, so they took silent black and white footage shot over 100 years ago. And they made a documentary, a 3D colorized documentary. And they also used recordings of World War I vets talking about their experiences in these theaters of war that this footage was shot in. And it is just a dazzling experience. And it will probably cure your... If you ever had an itch to go to war and have an adventure fighting... This will tell this will give you a good idea of what war is actually really like. It is an incredible experience. All right. And with that, we'll wrap up uh, the time capsule. Uh, Jake, what's your favorite movie of 2018? 3D movie. I got to give it to They Shall Grow Old, but there's very close behind. In fact, it's actually almost tied. Uh, it would be Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. All right. I'll give it to Avengers Infinity War. Love Avengers Infinity War. Oh, I love that, too. I would put that on there, too. All right. With that, it's the third place for top tier, for number one. Worst movie. <laughs> oh, Nutcracker in the, in the Fort Realms. Nutcracker. It's worse than Wrinkle in Time, huh? Yep, by far. Um, worse than Skyscraper. Yep. Um, for me, I mean, I, I'm sorry. I, I really hate Venom. <laughs> so, you know, I hate Venom. Uh, okay, best lost gem or, or gem or movie that people may have forgotten about. I'll give that to Alpha. Alpha's great. Fantastic. Yeah, I'd give it, I'd give it to Alpha. And I would also give it to Smallfoot. Uh, best surprise. That's a rough one. That's hard between Black Panther Spider-verse. and Spider Verse. Uh, I was expecting pa- Black Panther to be good because we had to build up to his character in um, in other Marvel movies. You know, from Civil War. Yeah. You know, we had Civil War had a real build up and of uh Black Panther, and to a lesser degree. Spider Man too. I guess I'll give it to Aquaman. I was not expecting that to be as good as it was. Yeah, I could see that, but I was just gonna give it to Spider Verse because the only reason I got to review it is because nobody else wanted to land on that grenade, so I got stuck with it because nobody else wanted to touch it. And God, was I surprised! I was expecting it to be just another terrible Sony adaption. So yeah, 2018 is a very interesting year for 3D movies. Some really great ones, some really bad ones, but there's a lot of interesting things that are definitely going to be uh, talked about in the future. With that, we'll wrap up this time capsule and close it again. We'll see you again for 2019. It's going to be an interesting year to talk about in 2020. <laughs> yep. That's it for us. Bye. Bye. Before this podcast wraps up, I want to thank my patrons. Thank you, Kano3D and Mr. Bango5 for your financial support on Patreon.com. So that's going to be it for this podcast. Thanks for listening. You can find 3D or 2D on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Pinterest, Instagram, and more. Just look for 3D or 2D. Links are in the info box. If you want to send us listener mail, our email address is email 3 d or 2 d at gmail.com. Thank you for either listening or watching this podcast. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone.